Greetings. Welcome to the Growth Hacking Show where we bring founders, CEOs, serial entrepreneurs who have been there, done that and they have gone through their life struggles how to build up their company or they have worked for big corporate or even by big governments how to do the right way, the right business with the right type of people because we want to learn from their experiences so that way we can grow ourselves not by doing our mistakes we can learn from their mistakes so we as a paid forward so we all kind of grow together and live in a better place so in this episode i have a very special guest he come from completely different background than most of the guests however you want to watch this why because the biggest buyer in the world is the government they spend more money than you can ever imagine in your niche there could be billions and billions if not billions there would be millions and millions of dollars of contracts so they federal government state governments and all over the world including anywhere because if you're dealing with the fed you have to follow the process checklist and until everything is like a, you know matches with the requirement your contract will not be accepted and you lost maybe weeks of or may some in some cases maybe months of follow up and work and everything however in that case who could you could have a better person than thinking or guessing or who has been on the other side of the table receiving those contracts on the other side and actually reviewing it every show not only for one month or two months for short term he has managed my guest has managed or bought or uh, managed over 3 billion dollar of contracts as a federal government employee on the other side and that brings a very unique perspective and based on the because he has been on the other side of the table now he is helping companies like you how to actually win contracts with the with the government as a contracting officer so that's a very unique been there done that and not only and he believes in paid forward he started recently for a few years ago he started a podcast contracting officer podcast and he is the host of that one you want to watch that too listen to the listen to that podcast as well however i can say i i tried the podcast is audio podcast this is the first time he is showing up himself i convinced him for you so that we show up on a video and because he is definitely a good smile you can see it i'm going to share his linkedin screen as well so please join me to give a warm welcome to my guest kevin jans kevin is the president of skyways acquisition and a host of contracting officer I, uh, and also he is expert witness in government uh, contracts and he has worked with tons of tons of contractors with his specialized skills from himself and also his team helping you to win your next contract with the federal government please join me to give a warm welcome to my guest kevin jans kevin welcome so well, thank you i appreciate you having me on here yeah kevin let me start with this where were you what happened who you were surrounded with that inspired you to get into this coming from the government side and flipping the side of the table and helping with kind of masses people who want to do win over those billions of dollars of contracts when i was a contracting officer i found that a lot of people were struggling they didn't know what i thought they would have known because again i'm on the government side i'm i'm understanding how the process works and i realized there were a lot of people who needed a lot of help and i've been an entrepreneur tried a bunch of new things over time nothing stuck as much as my passion for helping people win federal contracts and when you look at how big the market is and how complex it is and how many different opportunities there are it was a layup for me that i remember i was i was standing around a, a team of former ceos and they were all retired but they weren't doing anything with it and so we built this team of mostly retired former ceos myself included and we help people navigate this market from the ceo's perspective and that was 7 years ago and counting is that right okay. yeah exactly and counting <laughs> So before we get into kind of ask you tons of questions and we thank you for the opportunity to kind of learn directly from you you know working in a government and working as an entrepreneur these are like almost like a 180 angle difference the mindset and how the approach is that at least that's the assumption most of the people in a commercial marketplace they have it how how easy it was for you to make a switch from the working as a like w2 9 to 5 government and to as an entrepreneur where you have to kind of wear so many hats at the same time uh, it was it was hard i mean like it's hard for everyone who well everyone 
everyone I've known, it's a leap when you go from being part of a large organization to realizing that everything gets done or doesn't get done because of you. The biggest challenge was finding the right target customer. I found it was very easy that I wanted to sell to everybody. Everybody could, everybody should be able to use this, but it was hard because a lot of people, they thought, oh, I know, I, I've already won a contract. I can figure this out. But what I knew was when they got the contract, they weren't as profitable as they should be. They were struggling with it. They were losing the contract sooner than they should have. They weren't winning the next one. All of those things that I saw, it was hard to get people to see that. So to switch over to being a, a, a pure entrepreneur and feeding my kids, who at the time were four years old and six years old when I, when I quit my government job, to run this, this dream of having my own business that really changes the world of government contract. It, it was difficult. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's funny. I tell people it's the smartest and stupidest thing I ever did at the same time. <laughs> because on one hand, it was an incredible journey. I got to spend so much more time with my kids. I see my kids every day. I, I work out of my house. I built a company from the ground up. It has the culture that I love. It, it has the team members that are a great fit. But at the same time, as most entrepreneurs will tell you, the path to success is not a straight one. There's a lot of back and forth and right turns and loops and two steps back. And you got you to gotta be resilient is probably the word that I, I wish I believed how true that was seven years ago. But now I really see it. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. And I, based on your experience working with the, as a contracting officer and also uh, you know, consulting with so many clients, there are so many mistakes people do. So what are the top three missteps to avoid? to kind of win over the contract with the federal government? Uh, first thing is don't throw a big net. There is a huge amount of opportunity in the federal market. As you mentioned, it's the biggest buyer in the world. It's very easy, regardless of what you do, unless you're hyper niched. But if you provide IT services, if you provide professional cleaning, if you provide any kind of service, if you make any kind of product, the government probably buys it. And they probably buy a lot of it. But the trick is you can't try to sell to every agency in the government. And so when I say by throwing a big net, there are approximately 180 agencies that each individually buy things. Uh, there's Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Security, there are lots of different ones. Some of them are large. Department of Defense is the one that you know, but the Railroad, Railroad Retirement Fund is a really small one. There are lots of different ones. And if you throw a big net and try and serve all of them, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to spend a whole lot of time. And I'll tell you, you're probably not going to win anything because you need to be able to target. This is a, a rule for business as much as it is for government business is you, you need to pick with the right ones and know how to walk away from the wrong ones. The second one is you can't assume you're right about who should need your service or product. And what I mean by that is on the government side, how we buy things is different. Uh, using an easy example is that a small business set aside, which basically says I as a contracting officer have chosen to set this aside for companies that, if let's say it's a professional service, who have less than $7 million in revenue per or average over the last three years. That kind of granularity doesn't really exist in the private sector. So just because they can use your help, and just they can use your service, just because you want to sell to them, if they chose to set it aside for small businesses that make less than $7 million a year and you make 8.5, you literally aren't eligible. So for you to spend your time chasing that carrot, you, they can't give you a contract. They legally can't give you a contract. Likewise, it can be very easy to not see those opportunities because you're looking at the, at, the, at the big net. So make sure you understand who your target customer is in terms of how they buy. And I have you know, videos on, and you can Google a lot of different things, but if you look at the USA spending video that I did, it talks to, a lot of this information is available for free. One of the great things about the government market, so much of the data is available for free. You can see how they buy your product or services. You can see what kind of contracts they use, who they award it to. Do those companies look like you? If they don't, then you, you may not be very effective, even though they you think they should, they should buy from you. That's the challenge. You gotta be able to realize how do they buy it from, how does the government buy differently than my commercial customer? And then this, the third part is you gotta make sure you don't undervalue yourself. It's very easy to, to compete on price. You'll fear, hear many a story of government always buys on low price. And while in general terms, that is true, my, my earpiece is trying to jump out on me. While in general terms, it's true that the government buys on low price, it's not the first thing. I'll give you an example. When you have a competitive source selection, which is the process the government uses, sometimes it's a lowest price technically acceptable, which means there's a definition of technically acceptable. After that, it's lowest price. Those are the ones you'll see, the LPTA. You'll see the, a lot of content about that. 
But the other side of it is when they do what's called a best value. Price is still a big factor because if they have three companies, I, I did this a lot. I have three companies that were all relatively capable, all had relatively equal past experience. But in the end, I'm going to pick the one with the lower price, all other things being equal. So the perception is the government starts with price. And just like most buyers, we don't start with price. We might want a cheap car, but we're not going to decide on the price of $1,000 for a car before we go looking. Most of the time, we have a general idea what the requirement is, and then we fit a budget to that. Government is the same way. So don't assume they're only looking at price. If you only look at price, you're going to undervalue yourself. You're going to compete on price alone, and you're going to hate the government market because you're not going to make any money because you're going to be too cheap. That's a very valuable lesson. Thank you so much. Um, as we move along, Kevin, what are your top three success secrets uh, to win the contracts with the federal government? Subtract, then multiply is number one. And it's the idea of figure out what's working and then what's working well, and then delete the stuff that's just working or obviously delete the stuff that's not working. But find out what's really working. And again, you can look at the data. You can see what kind of what, what trend is available in the government market. How are they buying your services? Are they using large contracts with multiple awards? Are they using small business set-asides? Are they using simplified acquisition procedures? There are lots of different ways that the government can buy. It's not just put out an RFP and then get the lowest price. In fact, it's hardly ever that. There are lots of other steps. So subtract the things that aren't working. The second thing, when you diversify, if you diversify, once you find out what your target is, stick to that target. If you diversify, let your customer lead you. Let your government customer, because you will build relationships with them. Again, these are people. I was a person awarding contracts. When I had a contract that had a scope to make so many vehicles and we needed more vehicles, I would go get approval to add additional vehicles to that contract. People will tell you that you can't do that. Well, you can. In fact, if it was, if it was under $300,000, I could do it myself. I didn't have to get approval from anybody. So these things happen, but your customers will lead you to diversify. The more you try to do everything, the less successful you'll be. And quite honestly, as a contracting officer, the less interested I am. Because if you're not a specialist to what you do, I would rather find somebody who's a specialist because I can't afford to have you do things poorly. I need you to do them well. And then the third piece is your most valuable asset is your time. Make sure that you're using your time effectively. We talk about that on the podcast all the time. The value of targeting is that it saves you time. There are lots of tools to be able to sift through all of the government data and see which things should you be targeting, which types of agencies, which agencies buy what you sell in quantities that you can handle. Because there's a contract out there for a hundred times the quantity that you could ever produce. Don't bid on that one. Find the next one. There are more of them. There are plenty of smaller contracts, plenty of smaller agencies. Find that right fit. Because chasing everything will eat up more of your time than you, than you have to share. And that's the one thing that everybody has equal share of, right? It's time. We all got 24 hours. And as a government contractor, the biggest thing that will eat you alive is going onto a website and trying to figure stuff out. If you try and figure things out, you're, you're going to lose time. And in that time, by the way, RFPs are coming out, proposals are being uh, sent in, contracts are being awarded, et cetera. So be very, very leery of wasting any time. Wonderful. That's amazing. Uh, amazing piece of advice and your wisdom. And Kevin, how you're growing your podcast uh, listeners, subscribers right now? How are you growing your business in general right now? Well, and, and it's, it's, it's kind of overlapping question. The way that we're growing is we are targeting ruthlessly. Uh, our perfect customer, because our, our most, actually 96% of our revenue comes from customers who came from our podcast. And we've, grown, we've been doing the podcast for four years, and it's growing mostly by word of mouth, although we have LinkedIn ads and those kind of things. But the best customer for us, is because we believe in targeting, is a podcast listener. They're on LinkedIn, so they see our content, they see our capabilities. They already have a government contract or subcontract because they realize the difference between somebody who's just a consultant in the government market versus somebody who's been a contracting officer. If you've had a government contract and you had somebody like me sitting across from the table from you and, and they say, yeah, I don't want to give you an extra 5% profit on that. I can do that as a contracting officer. Your job is to convince me otherwise, right? Well, who do you want convincing you? You want somebody who's been in that seat. And so we specialize in companies who already have government contracts. And then the fourth thing we specialize in is people who are competing for work. There are lots of contracts you can get. And again, we have podcasts about that. There are contracts you can get without competing. For example, if, you have, if you're an 8A, you can get direct awards. If you're certain kind of socioeconomic, 
if you have a, a capability no one else has, you can get direct awards. But we focus on those four characteristics. Once we, if we stick to those, and, that, and that's what I tell people, targeting applies to us too. What makes our business grow effectively is we are ruthlessly targeting the people we know we can help the most. And the beauty of, the, of our podcast being free is the people that we can't help because they don't fit those four, they can still listen to the podcast. We're still helping them in the big picture. But for us to be able to target the right customers, who can, we, I mean, we're talking people that we triple their business in a year. I mean, we absolutely can blow the doors off for them. And that's why you hear me talking fast and getting excited because I see it work. And it's just, it's so much fun. So that leads to my next question. How the Growth Hacking Show community can support you? So if you want to 3X your business, so you want to get started with the host at a contracting officer podcast, is that right? Yes. And honestly, the, the best way you can help me or help us and help yourself for that matter is if you are in the government market or if you're interested in being in the U.S. government market, go to contractpodcast.com and you will see all 215 episodes of our podcast. And you can look me up on LinkedIn or, or elsewhere, but we have so much free content because we want people to, to just thrive in this market. And the best way for them to, to get to know the market is to listen to our content and then realize, okay, Skyway knows more than I'm ever going to figure out. And then eventually, a year from now, they'll call us. The best place to start is our podcast. So share the podcast. Even if it doesn't apply to you, share the podcast with somebody you think it will help. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So you go ahead and go on the website, iTunes, wherever the podcast is available. Start listening because that will help you to grow your business. And someday it may be 3x, 4x, even 10x. And then share your story, what happened to you. So Kevin, as we are about to wrap up, what would you say as a final word? Targeting, especially to do it ruthlessly, it, it's not easy. It's hard to walk away from money. And it's not fun to walk away from money because you, you know you can help somebody, but it's going to take you five years to close it. It's not going to be profitable, whatever that reason is. But people spend a lot of time going out of their way to justify not targeting. So don't be those people. The most successful companies, and, and I've, this is my fifth company I started, and this is the one that I was the most, most ruthless about focusing on. This is our exact customer. We, I don't want to say we ignore, but we don't focus on anybody else. And it's made all the difference in the world. Yeah. So to shoot, you have first, you have to point. Is that right? So you have to kind of point <laughs> the right way first. <laughs> yeah. And you got to have, you got to have a sight on your, on what you're, on your shoot, what you're shooting with. You got to be able yes, to. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Kevin, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today on the behalf of Growth Hacking Show community and our entire team. We really appreciate you. This is Mohammed Sadiq signing off from Atlanta, Georgia. Wishing you good luck, good sales, and I do have a path across again with another amazing guest. Until then, all best wishes. Thank you.